In this video, I want to formalize the binomial distribution. So you've got an idea of uh, precisely its nature and structure. We've seen in the previous video an example of where it comes about. We want to really uh, formalize that now. Okay. So uh, the binomial distribution, how we write it, and this will be a bit of new notation for you, is that if x is binomially distributed, then we write the x tilde b. So x is binomially distributed, and the binomial distribution has two bits of information that it carries with it. It has a certain number of trials, a fixed number of trials, n, and a probability of success, p. So n trials, and p is the probability of success. OK. So in the example that we saw in the previous video, uh, we were rolling a fair six-sided dice, and the success criteria was getting a six. So the probability of getting a six was one-sixth. OK. So there's a few caveats that must go with this, OK, to make sure that you're clear that a binomial distribution is appropriate. OK, so the fact that it is binomial means that there are two possible outcomes. OK, so that's why we've got this probability of success and the alternative is failure. OK, so the probability of failure is 1 minus p. OK, 1 take away the probability of success. Now, each of the n trials must be independent of one another. OK, so once you've done one trial, when you're going to do the next one, OK, the next one has got to have completely the same set of conditions as the first one. OK, so um, you can't, if you're um, thinking about looking at uh, pulling cards from a, pack, uh, a deck of cards, if you don't have replacement, then each time you pull a card out and put it to one side, the situation changes, and you cannot model it using a binomial distribution in that case. Okay? The probability must stay the same each time, so you'd have to have replacement. Okay? So um, that's got to be very clear. So what we then found from that is that the probability of x being a certain value, OK, was split up into three sections. Now, if you've looked at binomial expansion, then you'll be used to seeing these three sections. The first section is um, the Pascal's triangle being used. So Pascal's triangle, um, which to remind you, looks like this. OK, so each of the individual terms is the sum of the two above it. So 4 is 3 plus 1, Ted is 6 plus 4, etc. OK, so we had um, a formula, the NCR formula, that would, is able to pick out any number that's in Pascal's triangle, OK, that uses the NCR button on your calculator, OK? So that's the first piece of the puzzle. So that is your NCR on your calculator, OK? So remember, that is found uh, just above the division symbol, OK? Now, the next bit is how many times you want the, prob the uh, probability of success to appear. OK? So if you've got n trials and you want um, three sixes to appear, then r is 6. So you'll want the probability of a 6 to appear happening three times. So this number here 
is r, the same number that we have there. Okay. So if you want r successes, then you're going to want n minus r failures. So the failure, remember, is 1 minus p. And that is to the power of n minus r, because you want the failures to appear n minus r times. So this is your formula for a binomial probability. OK? So if you know how many trials there are, and you know how many successes you want, and you know the probability of success, you can substitute those three bits in, the P, the N, and the R, into that problem, OK? Into that formula. Now, to be completely clear, the formula-wise, really that, to keep it working through, should be R, OK? So the probability of x being equal to your R value, how many... Um, times you want it to appear, OK? So if you want um, three sixes to appear, then the probability of x being equal to three, so that's how you should write it, OK? Now, you might see this in uh, several different guises, depending on which textbook you use. Um, you may also see this written as q. Like that. So Q is 1 minus P there. OK? So that is what we're going to be using. Now, your calculator, the Casio class whiz, OK, can circumvent um, the formula. And so you can find exact values of the probabilities using your calculator. And you'll be expected to use your calculator in order to do it. To fully understand where that's coming from, it is using this formula in order to get there.